Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. I'm really excited today because I'm going to be completing the cross slide for the Shaper project. Now, in this video, uh, this cross slide, I, it is the most <laughs> precise fitment, I think, of parts that I've done yet. Like nothing in the lathe, nothing in the Shaper fits as well as this part. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now the first thing I did, as usual, is I prepared a lost foam pattern. Now this is a pattern of foam pieces that are assembled using spray adhesive. I sand it down to give it a nice finish and then I coat it with plaster of Paris. I embed that pattern into a sand bed uh, where I then can pour molten aluminum onto the foam. It vaporizes the foam and displaces those gases. The gases go out into the sand and you're left with a frozen aluminum piece that matches the shape of your polystyrene pattern that you embedded in the sand. I made the pattern for the cross slide and cast it. However, I poured too cold, it didn't fill the mold, so I remade the pattern and I also went ahead and made patterns for the supports for the vertical screw as well as the cross slide lead screw and I will try to cast all these at one time and that way I can be a little bit more efficient. The initial casting attempt did not turn out well. I poured when the metal was too cold and it didn't fill this initial pattern. So I've remade the same pattern for the cross slide. I've also made patterns for the support brackets for the cross slide lead screw as well as the vertical lead screw and I'll be casting these in a batch today. Hopefully it goes a little bit smoother than the first time. I'll pour hotter and uh, we'll see how it turns out. I melted down the aluminum in my portable foundry and I use argon gas. I bubble it through the molten aluminum. And the idea there is the argon provides a pressure differential and helps the hydrogen that's dissolved in the molten aluminum be motivated to come out of that aluminum even at elevated temperatures. And after that, I apply a bit of aluminum flux and use that to skim off the dross and hopefully remove some of the impurities such as oxides and other debris that might be suspended in the aluminum and then I pour. I poured these two parts first and then I had to come back and pour that one. This is the support brackets for the cross slide lead screw and this is the support brackets for the vertical lead screw. So let's see how we did. That one looks pretty good. There is some, boy I need a new pair of tongs don't I? There is some rounding on the top and I I need to kind of figure out why that does that. I mean, obviously it's because of gases that get trapped in the top of the casting, but the literature I've read from the American Foundry Society suggests that you do not need vents. At least commercial casters do not use vents in their lost foam castings. All right, now that's the one we're looking for, and that looks... That looks pretty good. I included this little uh, channel up at the top to serve as a reservoir for the gases that do tend to bubble up towards the top of the casting. There's a little rounding on that corner right there. But other than that, you know, at this point it looks like a pretty, pretty good casting. That looks like a good casting as well. So three successful castings. I really do love lost foam casting.
I went through all the steps necessary to get this part fitted well to the ways and pretty much what I did was I used a piece of sandpaper on some cold rolled steel to sand down the interior channel. I then scraped it. Then I sanded down the pads that the clamps go on and got those scraped in to where they were just a little bit shorter than the ways are. I installed some shims, drilled and tapped the holes in the cross slide for the clamps, bolted on the clamps. Then I fabricated a gib. Then I installed these gib adjustment screws with jam nuts. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. This is the best part that I've ever made as far as how it mates. There's absolutely no play. I scraped all four sides of the cross slide ways. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that after the cross slide ways were attached to the cross slide support that that was truly flat so i scraped the top and then i installed the clamps without the gib or gib adjustment screws i could tell kind of where the clamps were hitting maybe parts that were thicker on the cross slide ways so i scraped uh, pretty much on either end a little bit of material from the underside of the cross slide ways And then I could tell where the thick spots across the major dimension of the cross slide ways was. And I scraped those thick spots and put some oil on the ways. And man, I'm really happy with how, it, how it's working. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. In the next video, I'm going to be fabricating the lead screw for the cross slide, as well as the lead screw for the vertical ways. Thanks for watching.